Welcome back guys, it's Israel. So did you guys know it's pretty easy to set up your .NET 8 API so that it uses Postgres? Want to know how to do it? Then keep watching this video. Let's go. But before we jump into the project, I quickly want to shout out my channel members. If you guys want to see your names here, as well as have access to whatever code from whatever video you guys want, click the link below or the join button on my profile and send an email to this email with the code you want access to. But now, onto the video. All right, guys, so we are now at the project. I've gone ahead and just created a basic blank API. I just deleted the weather controller and the weather model and all that stuff. I just deleted that. So it's a clean, brand new .NET 8 API. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is if you have not gone ahead and downloaded Postgres SQL, you're probably going to go ahead and do that. So let me show you how to do it. So you're going to want to go to postgresql.org, then go to download and then find whatever download you need. So in my case, Windows, then you can click this right here, download the installer and then click the one that you need and then download it. Once you have the installer downloaded, you should see something like this whenever you double click it. So next, uh, install it. So you do want PG4 admin. PG4 admin, for those of you that may be new to Postgres, is essentially like SQL Server Manager or Toad or anything they use for Oracle. It's essentially the way you can visualize your Postgres DB without having to go into the command line and see it in that very ugly format. PG admin 4, it will right here. Download it if you need it. If you want to go a different way in getting PG admin 4, you would have to go to this link. If you wanted to get PG admin directly without going through this installer, then you can go to pgadmin.org backslash download and then download the one that you want. But we want to just get it right through the Postgres installation. So we're just going to go ahead and click this. We're going to install it. So since I've downloaded Postgres in the past, I get this prompt that basically said that it's found configurations from the past. But if you're doing this for the first time, it will just sort of ask you, I believe, the port that you want, which the default is just 5432. So you can leave that, then a password, and then I believe maybe a username uh, for your database. So you can go with just the defaults for all of them and then just a simple password for your database. Don't need to get too crazy. But once you have that, you should be able to go ahead and finish the install. So my Postgres has finished installing. How can we check that it's installed correctly? Well, for one, you should be able to see that you have PG admin for now installed here as well as you should see that if you do PSQL, you should see that you have this SQL shell right here that wants you to connect to your uh, Postgres database. So if we open up servers, we're going to see that we already have this default server right here. Try and click on this. It's going to say enter the password for the user Postgres. This is going to be the credentials for what you created whenever you were uh, installing Postgres. So let me put mine. So once I save that, you'll see that a whole bunch of stuff uh, already pops up for me, but that's because I already went ahead and had Postgres installed before. So I already have those files still saved on my computer. You guys might have something a little blank, but with that, all you're gonna have to do is click right here, create a database. You can go ahead and do that. And then once you have that, I already have one created called AppDB. And then if you go down to schemas, public, and then go down to tables, I have one table right here. It is called Pokemon. If you right click here, you're going to see that I'm going to select all the data. I'm going to have only three things as three columns, an ID, the name Metagross, and then we're going to have the type of Steel Psychic uh, from a Pokemon table. So this is the database that we're going to be working with, but this is what you have here. If you are struggling to connect to your Postgres, let me just walk you through if you were to try and connect to your server. So this can be whatever you want. Here, you're gonna have that port. Here, you're gonna have the default database. So usually it's Postgres or it's whatever you gave it whenever it wanted to create a default DB, but usually the default is just called Postgres. The username and password are gonna be whatever you set. And then this host name or address Either it's going to be localhost because it's going to be your machine, or if you have, I don't know, Postgres somewhere else, it would be like the IP address or whatever port you're trying to connect to. But that's just me explaining here. Then you would save and it would connect to that server. Then you can go ahead and create your databases. So just wanted to walk you guys through that. But this is a database I'm going to be using for this project. So a database, it's going to be called AppDB. In our schemas, we have a table, like I said, a Pokemon table with these three columns. So now that we're here, I just want to show you guys how to set that primary key for a table because I know uh, it can be a little tricky and hard to find. So let me show you how I did it in this one. So I'm going to go to properties of this table. So right here, you're just going to give it the name of the table. Then you're going to go to columns. So in your column, what you're going to want to do is 
obviously give it whatever ID. So I did integer, not null, primary key. But what you'd like to do is you're going to go down here to constraints. And in constraints, you set it right here to identity. So there's a few ways to do it. But if you want to do it like on a, on a normal new column, let me show you. So you would do like add, do other ID. You could do integer. And then you would go here and you would set this to identity here. So you could do it a few different ways. So just to make sure that it's uh, incrementing, right? Because you can set it to primary key, but this isn't going to set it to, I think, where it's going to increment every time you add. So I believe that's the other step. So just wanted to clear that up in case you guys are a little bit confused. Um, and I know it can be a little hard to go through all these menus and all this stuff when it's new. So just wanted to show you that. And that's all you guys need to know for actually getting Postgres installed. And now let's actually integrate it with our .NET 8 API. So we're going to need a few packages to get Postgres working as well as Entity Framework Core. So we first need Entity Framework. So we're going to need that one first. So let's install. Let me go to browse. We're going to need Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore Framework Core first of all. That one's just going to be in general for interacting uh, with our database. So let's install that. Then next up, once that's done, we're going to need NPG SQL. So we're going to need this package right here. It is going to be this one right here. NPG SQL is the open source.net provider for Postgres SQL. So that one is what you're going to need to install. Once you install that one, the next one that we're going to need is going to be this one right here. This is for the provider for Entity Framework Core. So you want this Entity Framework Core dot Postgres SQL. Also install that one. And then the last one you're also going to need is this design. So Postgres SQL design, you're going to need that as well for it working with Entity Framework. So install that. And these should be all the packages that you guys need to get uh, Postgres working with your .NET 8 API. So now let's actually go to the implementation. So in the program.cs, we're going to need to add the following. We are going to need to add under controllers. And bear with me if we don't have some of the stuff created. I will be filling it in as we go, but I just want to start with the program. So in the program.cs, we're going to have in our services, we're going to declare a DB context of app DB context. This context is going to be for this database in here for my app DB. And then we're going to say use npg sql this is essentially saying that we're going to be using a postgres sql database and then we're just passing in our connection string from our app settings our app settings is going to look something like this so let's go ahead and do this in our app settings we're going to have just this one connection string it's going to be connecting to the host is localhost your port 5432 your database app db username postgres and then our super secret password test one two three percent why does this look familiar? It's because if you were attempting to connect to a server, it's essentially the parameters that go in here. So close this, close this, and that's going to be our connection string to the Postgres database. And that's what's being declared in here under default connection. And that is all that we're going to need in the program.cs, but we do have a few things that we need to go ahead and create. So under controllers, I'm going to right click here. I'm going to add a controller and I'm going to call it Pokemon controller for our Pokemon table because that's what we're going to be interacting with right here. Let's add that in as well as I want to create a models folder. So in here, I'm going to click add new model and it's going to be models. And then we're going to create a new item called app DB context. All right, so now that we have our AppDB context, obviously that's going to be the representation of our database that we have over here with just one table. So with that being said, this is what our AppDB context is going to look like. It's going to look something like this. We are just declaring it as a DB context. We're going to have its constructor. And then we have our one table of Pokemon, which is the one table that is right here. Now we need to go ahead and create this model. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to do add new item. We're going to call it Pokemon and it's going to have just the three columns in it. So that is going to be the following. That is just going to have ID name and type. So with that being said, we already have our model here correctly. 
So now we need to go back to our program and bring in our AppDB context model in here as well. And now this has been fixed and we have all three of our models here. So now let's go ahead and move back into our controller and actually start making that connection with our database. So we're back in our controller. Let's start setting this up. Let's set this as controller base. Let's do our route here. We're going to get rid of this because we don't have views. So the next thing is I'm going to bring in my AppDB context. I'm just going to directly reference the context here. I'm not going to do repositories and interfaces and all of that good stuff separation. Uh, just because the main point of this video is I just want to interact directly with the Postgres database. That is the goal. That's what I want to show. So I just want to jump straight to it. So now that we have our constructor done, we can now move on to our endpoint. So the first one we're going to have is get Pokemon. This looks exactly the same as if you were to interact with any other database. The entity framework here is not changing at all for Postgres. So we're just doing a get Pokemon endpoint. So get Pokemon's actually to make this the same. We're basically going to our Pokemon table and we're just going to select everything in there. So now that we're done with get Pokemon, let's move on. We're going to have a create Pokemon. Again, it's going to look exactly how you would expect to create. We're passing in a Pokemon and then it gets saved. We're now going to have an edit. That's again going to receive an edited Pokemon. We are going to go and execute update async and do that all in one swoop. And then we're going to do the same thing with HTTP delete, which is again going to look exactly how you expect to delete. And we're going to be using execute delete async. So again, it goes into the table where this matches, just delete it and then give us back how many rows were affected. So that's what's going on here. And with that being said, I believe this is everything that we need to do to get Postgres working with our .NET 8 API. So just before we test to see if this is working, if you guys have found this video helpful, please drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the other amazing content that I have for you guys. But now let's see if this worked. So now we're actually ready to test. So I'm gonna run the API right here and we're gonna see if we're even connecting uh, to our Postgres database. So we're going to run get Pokemon. And again, what should we return? We should return this one row right here where it's steel psychic. So let's try it out. Let's execute. We see that we're getting steel psychic and Metagross back. And if we want to confirm that I'm actually talking to this, we can go ahead and edit this. So let's edit this right here. Steel psychic two. Okay. Save our changes right here. So now we're going to save it. And now we're going to pull again. Now we see that we're getting steel psychic two, which is what I edited here. So we are correctly talking to our Postgres database and it is all good. So now let's go ahead and test our other endpoints. So now let's go ahead and try our create. So we're going to open this. We're going to do Charizard and then we're going to do fire. So let's execute and let's see if we hit our endpoint. We're going to do that there. So let's execute. We see that we hit our endpoint with our object. Let's continue. Uh, we see that our response was 200 with an ID of two. That means that if we go over here and we view our data again, we should see that now we have all three of these working. So now we can do an edit. So let's go ahead and do that. We can go here. We can try it out. We can do an ID of two because that's Charizard. We're going to just do mega Charizard and then we're just going to leave fire. So I believe in our edit, all we're doing is checking, yes, matching the IDs and then we're setting the property of name to the new value. So what I'm going to do is actually just go here and now we are going to execute this. So we get in here, we see that we have mega Charizard and that we have replaced this. And by that is we are returning the object, but now let's pass this through. And we see that we get the response 200. So now if again, I execute the script, we now see mega Charizard and fire. So everything's been good so far. And now let's go ahead and delete this just to finish off that we have correctly worked and created multiple different CRUD endpoints that all interact with a Postgres DB. So let's go here. Let's try it out and let's do Pokemon ID two. And we're going to execute. We get true because here we were just returning true. If we get to the bottom, a little lazy on my part, but hey, we can't do it all. And now if we refresh it here. We just have Metagross. 
So we were able to create a .NET 8 API, install Postgres onto our machine, get PG admin working, create a database, create a table, and then we were able to connect our .NET 8 API to integrate with Postgres and actually work and talk to it, communicate, pass data across, create things, edit things, delete things, and get them all working. And now you guys can take it to wherever you want to take it. But now that we've created a .NET API that uses a Postgres DB, which we can visualize using PG admin, maybe you guys want to take all three of these and containerize them with Docker. Well, if you want to do that, watch this video right here.